Hi, I'm Adam and welcome back to First Man Photography. Now you are about to witness one of the hardest days of landscape photography I have had for quite some time. Before we get going today though, this video is sponsored by Lexar. If you need fast, reliable and high quality memory cards, look no further than Lexar. A simple goal that I've set for myself this year is to just be outside more. So yesterday when I was looking at the forecast and I saw on my screen those little snowflakes, I knew I had to go out. I hope you are sitting warm and comfortably. Right, the snow is starting to come down now, which I'm quite excited about because my theory is that it is interesting weather conditions that are more likely to get you some unique and beautiful images rather than traveling to new or the kind of more exciting mountainous type locations. So I've come to a, a fairly interesting place today, but one I came to just a couple of weeks ago when I captured this image here in beautiful foggy conditions. But the problem is trying to photograph different weather conditions brings with it a number of challenges because you can waste time, you can come to what normally would be mundane locations and be disappointed if the weather doesn't do what you're hoping for it to do. But today, at the risk of sort of talking about weather in a boring way, there is a front coming, or a front bringing lots of wet weather with it into very, very cold air. So it, snow is almost guaranteed. It is very, very cold though, because it's just so windy. I'm taking shelter in this wood to do this piece of the camera, but the second I get out there where there's some interesting trees in that more open landscape, which will be able to capture that snow, that's where I need to be. I'm also going to have an issue with keeping everything dry. I'm going to get wet pretty quickly, I think. Oh, but that's going to be the challenge. That is going to be the challenge today. Right, it is really windy and really starting to snow now, but I'm kind of just trying to wait until either the snow thickens or I just get an, a thicker layer on the ground and in the trees because I think that it's going to be that that is the key to capturing those beautiful winter images or at least they're the kind of images that I'm after but since I am essentially encouraging you to go out in interesting and challenging weather I feel like a little safety kind of warning is necessary because these conditions are so tough and if you stray far from the car, it can very quickly get dangerous if you have some sort of injury. I spend every day pretty much in jeans, a t-shirt and a hoodie. In the summer, I put some shorts on and I take the hoodie off and I'm not interested in fashion, but I do spend money on good gear for the outdoors because it makes all the difference. I think the most important thing is to have good footwear I'm wearing these winter boots today. But then after that, your outer layer in conditions like this is utterly vital. Something that is waterproof. And then secondly, is windproof because it's so windy today and it's so cold that if this jacket wasn't 100% windproof, it would be utterly miserable and I'd be freezing cold. But as it is, I'm a reasonably sized guy as well. I'm actually pretty comfortable apart from getting the snow in my eyes. But I have a little solution for that that someone who follows me and lives in Scotland and goes up the mountains there recommended. So if I just go to my bag for a second, I'll show you. These, as you can see, are a very, very cheap pair of skiing goggles. And in this, in these conditions, when that snow is literally going sideways into your face like little bullets, they make all the difference. They may look very stupid. There's no doubt about it. But as I kind of face into it and my face continues to get blasted with the wind and snow, they just make it super comfortable. So I think these are about 15 pounds off Amazon. Super cheap, super effective. They've got little sort of air holes in the top so it don't, they don't steam up. Uh, yeah, it means that I can stand around here, explore around here and wait comfortably until I get a lovely layer of snow. So yeah, snow goggles, <laughs> there you go. Snow goggles, skiing goggles. Oh. oh God, I think I'm gonna have to reassess my tactics here because being out in the open, although it kind of looks really, really cool, it's just become so difficult. It's difficult underfoot, it's cold, it's windy, the snow's going 
horizontally which isn't making the shots look particularly interesting and I'm finding it really difficult just simply exploring around and looking for compositions but every time I get the gear out it just becomes almost impossible because everything just gets soaked immediately and the brutality of that wind ah it's just causing so many problems and when I stand around as well I'm starting to get a bit cold in this wind so I think I mean if I turn around you can see it kind of starting to kind of blast into your face the most frustrating thing is though that is I feel like I'm missing opportunities but it's just so hard to explore around I'm sure you can hear the wind so I think I need to change my tactics and what I might do is get back into the woods and explore what's going on in there because I think the snow's actually sticking to the trees in the woods better than it is out here where the wind is kind of possibly blowing some of it off as well so I think I'll um, get into the woods see if I can grab at least one image oh, oh absolutely brutal oh, this is the worst conditions I've had for quite some time Like I said, I think I'm missing something. I feel like I'm missing an opportunity. Right. Oh, I'm into the woods. <laughs> and it's becoming really difficult to film. This camera's just sort of died, but thankfully come back to life. And I'm glad I came back into the woods because it is just looking utterly fantastic look at the snow on these trees without as much wind it's just settling beautifully on these trees a little bit like last time i was doing woodland photography i think it's even more the case when shooting trees and woods woods in snow is that you need to find some way to create some depth to give the image that meaning because while i'm looking at it in 3d and it looks incredible you lose that when you convert it to a 2d still image and it just becomes messy oh, but look at it oh to be honest it's just a relief to be out of that wind i really want to get something today just that one image that one special image that i can take away and make a really good print with right i'm happy to say this i think i have found a composition now but before i show you that before we talk about it as you know this video is sponsored by lexar now lexar make SD cards and memory cards of all different types and I've been using them for a lot of years and in my opinion they are the best cards available. They come in a range of speeds and sizes and capacities and they will suit all of your needs whatever you are shooting. They are fast, they're reliable, they're high quality. I particularly like to use this 2000X SD card which is perfect for all your 4K footage and your fast burst rate stills and it's also great for transferring files if you're out and about in the cold like this as well if you need to do that of course. So go down to the description below and click that link to check out the Lexar cards and give them some love for supporting this channel right now i think when conditions get difficult uh and we're aiming to shoot familiar locations in tricky weather conditions the beauty of that is that we can return to places that we know really well compositions that we know and that's exactly what i am doing here because if you watched the video a couple of weeks ago this is the same wood i was in when it was really misty and I photographed these two marvellous trees here and I think I'm going to go for roughly the same composition though there are some slight differences because in that previous video I talked about creating depth in your woodland images. Now fog in woodland is beautiful because it creates that depth by simplifying the background and setting your subject trees or your subject away from the background. It isolates them and puts the attention of the image on to those things but today I don't have any fog so it's going to be more difficult what I do have though is the snow settling on those trees just so beautifully the other day that was moss but today it's the snow but I can still see a little bit of that green moss in the bark and it's just looking fantastic I'm drawn to the same thing the kind of complementary shapes and forms of that tree as the curve of one tree is filled in by the other I just think that's absolutely fantastic I think that's why the composition 
works. But in terms of setting these trees away from the background, another way to do it is with luminance. And I think that's what I've got on my side today because as the snow has fallen, a lot of the background looks very white. It's covered with snow, essentially, even though it is starting to sleet a bit now. I think I don't have too much longer left. There's bark that's showing it's not covered in snow of the two subject trees is much darker than the background so it's really popping out i think that's what's going to make it work i think i'm not a hundred percent confident because i've got to be honest i've been rattled by these conditions today which takes some doing with me to be honest but oh, i'm a bit sore as well but it's uh so it's been a difficult shoot i mean everything's soaking this camera is barely working anymore so i think <laughs> If I can get this shot done, I will be quite pleased. I've changed the composition slightly as well, the aspect ratio in particular. The other day when I did it, it was kind of a four by five, eight by 10 type shape. And that worked because of the fog. But today, I think it's gonna be a 16 by nine because the sky's even brighter and I wanna sort of bring that down so I don't get as much sky in there. But then the, the tree, my subject trees are really standing out from this wider vista. As you can see, like around where my hand is, it's really white there. So the darkness of that bark is separated from that background because it's so white. I don't want it to be a black and white image, but it, in these conditions in woodland, it is very monochromatic. It's kind of that browny green and white, but I want to bring some of that color out, I think, because if I do it black and white, I feel like I'm more, I'm more likely to lose the subject into the background think <laughs> like i say i'm not feeling particularly confident but i want this to be an image that we can print i really do yeah i'm at f16 one eighth of a second and then just because of the lighting conditions then i am at iso 400 i'm in thick woods here so there's no movement in any of the branches here so one eighth of a second is absolutely fine but i don't particularly want to go any lower than that i mean it, it, it <laughs> I've, this is kind of the problem I've had before, is that it can look good on the screen. With woodland, I'm not very good at actually knowing if it works until I see it on that bigger screen. And then I know instantly, and I'm often disappointed. So I hope that's not gonna be the case today because unless I'm lucky getting back to, on my way back to the car, this is probably gonna be my only image today. But that is all I wanted. That was, all I was after, as it's now stopped snowing. Um, just the one image that I can take away and print. On days like this, I'm reminded of the importance and necessity of the struggle. Difficult days make us stronger, more resilient, and able to deal with the next challenge. It may only take a fraction of a second for the shutter to drop, but the time, the endeavour and the craft required to make a good landscape photograph gives it an intrinsic value that other genres of photography perhaps cannot claim. I'm pleased with this final image, but the fact it was arduous to capture has generated a greater sense of meaning. These days can often end with us feeling cold and miserable, but on reflection we we'll remember them as fun due to the very fact they were difficult. We achieved something, we overcame the challenge, and it leaves us with the deep sense of fulfillment and burning desire to do it all again.